Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today we're taking a look at the ROG Maximus Z790 Hero that now costs £670. The prices this generation are nuts because obviously PCR Express 5 adds a lot of complexity into everything because they need to make the boards thicker, they need to make the boards, the signal strength stronger. Uh, it does make life more difficult. But prices have been going up anyway, but couple it all together and it does mean a very, very expensive motherboard. Uh, it does have 20 plus. In fact, let's have a look around the board because what I want to do is I want to give you a good look around the board, show you what you get in the box because it's a little bit more than some of the other brands and then we'll talk about performance and overclocking. I uh, have also done a lot of other boards that are live on the website and on the channel as well. It has been a busy few weeks. I have waited until the end so that I can graph all the boards that I've tested so far. So you can compare the performance with not just one or two boards, but I think there's like six or eight boards in the graphs now. I can't remember, I've lost count. And uh, the other side of it is I will talk to you about the specific performance and overclocking and my experience with the board as well. So you get more of a kind of like a personal approach with it. But let's crack on, but please remember to like, subscribe, comment, share to your friends, share to your nan, share to your dog and your cat as well if you enjoy the video. So I did say that you get a little bit more inside the box with the Hero than you do the other brands. The other brands you've literally got in there and there's been a couple of SATA cables in there uh, and then a Wi-Fi dongle and then not a lot else. Obviously you get a magnetic Wi-Fi dongle with this one. You get four SATA cables which are nice. You do get an RGB extension which is nice as well. You do get a couple of uh, add-on fan additional things but with all due respect if you do find yourself needing one of these then you've probably got it on a test bench with no airflow and you're going to be dangling fans around it anyway please don't be fitting these into a case because if you need these in your case you probably need a better airflow case because i have had zero heat uh thermal problems or anything with this board or any of the other boards for that matter what you do get otherwise inside the box though is all your drivers and everything on a USB. This is actually becoming more common though. They are not the only ones doing this now. So it is nice that you get a nice Asus branded USB stick. You get them with the, most of the other boards as well. You get yourself a ROG card. Yeah, plastic card um, for you to put in your wallet. I don't know, give it to your little brother to take to school. Your son, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, and you also get the Hyper M.2 card. Gen 5, it does say on the first one. It doesn't say Gen 5 on the second one, but you get two M.2 slots in that, should you need it. So there you go. You can see two slots down the back. Fair old bit of wasted space in reality. Big old heat sink as well. No fan, no lights or anything. Quite simple, just four screws to take it apart. There you go, I'll bring a nice photo up of it for you to take a look at. Now, the board itself, as I have said, the power delivery up here, it is 20 plus one uh, power phases. Um, I have asked Asus, they normally give you a review guide and then you can look in the review guide and you can see what the MOSFETs are and the PWM and you can literally go in there and have a look and see what's going on. Uh, but I've asked, and I haven't got any. So all I know is they are 90 amp power phases. Uh, but because I don't know what they are, I can say that this has 20 plus one 90 amp power phases, but the Aorus Master is 20 plus one plus two, and they're all 105 amp power phases. So there's a good comparison for you. Um, and because I can't look in to find out the quality or anything because they've not sent any of the review guides, that's more than likely that it means that the local people have not got them from HQ, but no matter what, we haven't got them. I can't talk to you in depth about it like I'd like to. Two eight pins up here. Shielded, yes. Uh, solid pins in the corner, yes. Come along, you've got a CPU overbolt header. Bringing you in so we can have a closer look then you get a whole wealth of fans across the top. There are four in total, CPU, uh, we know. So you're gonna have a channel fan one there, 
Uh, ah, CPU fan, CPU optional. AIO pump, so the, that one there will be at full speed unless you change it. Then channel fan one. Post the head out there. Retry button. Uh, start. Flex key, which you can obviously change, but reset if you don't change it. Addressable RGB here. 24 pin, you can see they're all solid pins as well. You get another six pin here for if you want to add extra power in. You don't have to plug that in, really, unless you want to really start absolutely smashing the overclocks and probably be going beyond water cooling. Um, the Asus original PCR Express release has evolved. So whereas the Gigabyte one just rocks and I take the mickey out of Gigabyte for saying that they copy Asus, the Asus one now slides and I really like this. I much prefer this. It does also make me think of something like Pac-Man. Anyway, I'm childish. So USB 3.2 there. Six SATAs. Another USB 3.2 there. Come down to the bottom corner, you have your water cooling area, front panel header, then front panel or internal USB, three more fan headers, and then along the bottom you've got a further three RGBs and you get two addressable RGB and you get one four pin. So on the board in total you get one four pin RGB and you get three addressable RGB. Supreme FX audio. I'll show you the breakdown for the M.2s, but one thing I will say is that the heat sink on the PCR Express 5 one isn't that big. Around the back of the board, 2.5 gig Ethernet, three USB-Cs, a HDMI on the back as well for if you do end up needing to use the graphics on the CPU itself. Obviously, this is not where we would plug in if you have a dedicated graphics card. This is only for the graphics on the CPU. And to be fair, most of you, if you've bought this board, you're only going to be using this if your graphics card's died and you need to check video and that sort of thing. Wi-Fi 6E, gold-plated uh, output for your audio and lots of black and mirrors. Okie dokie, so uh, weirdly the amperage on the power phases is 15 amp per one down on the master and they're quite close in price. The Aorus is 620, this one is uh, 670, could call it Asus tax. Um, now normally I'd go in and like I said, I'd actually go in and look at the specifics of the uh, power phases and I've not been able to with this one, which is a shame because I'd like to have tried and fought its corner and tried to explain why they're only 90 amp versus the 105 amp. Uh, but sadly, I can't. Now, one thing, I, again, I will say in its defense is with all the other boards, you've been looking at around 1.3 uh, volts to get my overclock. Now, with the overclock, it was 5.7 on the P-Cores, sorry, 5.6 on the P-Cores, and then you were looking at uh, 4.5 on all of the e cores. With the ASUS, we actually did manage to go up to 5.7. So we've got another 100 megahertz on that. But most importantly with the ASUS is, as I've said, the other boards were around 1.3 volts. The Aorus actually required 1.32 volts to get 5.6 stable. This actually was only 1.2 seven five volts to get one to get 5.7 gigahertz stable now the only thing i do need to say in comparison is despite the aorus needing more volts the cpu was cooler with the asus it needed less volts normally that would mean the cpu was cooler but we were always consistently struggling with temperatures with the cpu with this i have a sneaking suspicion though based on previous experience with asus when they get down and f work on their BIOSes, they're normally the best in the business as far as BIOS revisions are concerned. And I have a sneaking suspicion that they will get this dialed in. There's the only other thing that I will say is with the other boards, it they felt easier to get the overclocks out of them. With Asus, despite, yes, I did manage to get that extra 100 megahertz, 
but even to get 5.6 stable, it felt like I was having to make many, many more changes in the BIOS to find stability. Now, I find that quite easy because I've worked with these boards and a very similar looking BIOS for probably nigh on, like th this generation of BIOS, probably six, maybe eight years, I genuinely can't remember. But you kind of, you can go in there and you know, you get to know the things that you need to change, but I always do it and it doesn't make any difference. And then I change another set and it doesn't make any difference. And then you build up the package and you find your stability. It do, did feel that compared to the others, you did need to be far more hands-on to be able to do this. It's the sort of thing where really I should be making an overclocking guide to guide you through it, to go and kind of show you the easy things that you can go in and change to help find stability and move things forward. But it also makes me feel like maybe they could make it a little bit easier for you. There was also a button where you could go in and make a change to uh, for the core priority. Um, and the one thing I will say about that is it did manage to get all of the cores stable at 5.8 for you. But the problem with that was the CPU overheated, which meant it then throttled, which then meant all the scores came down. So it was artificially looking like it was great at 5.8 gigahertz, but the performance drop off was about 25% because everything just got too hot. So there are many things that you do need to do and tweak and keep an eye on. It's an enthusiast board to go in and tweak. If you make a change, run a benchmark. If you make another change, run a benchmark. If you are overclocking, make sure that you're doing changes, monitoring your temperatures, and doing benchmarks that give you a number, not a stability test, although you do need to do that as well, but look for a number. Maybe you're running Blender. Maybe you're going to uh, run Cinebench. You're going to need to get a physical number out of it so that you can see if the performance starts to tail off. Because if it does, then you need to be looking at your temperatures. Is your CPU overheating? Uh, if it does overheat, the CPU will throttle itself. Your 5.8 will turn into 4.5 very quickly. So there are those things that you do need to keep in mind. So if you're willing to put the time and effort asking your friends, looking on forums like the Overclock 3D forums, going on the PC Master Race, if you are prepared to put the time in, then you can get a lot out of it. But you either need to be quite skilled or very patient and be willing to uh, both accept advice and then go and uh, test it and benchmark it to find it. So overall, it's a very capable board, let down by the fact that they're not sending out review guides as willingly as they used to. So we were quite limited. And I literally went and looked on the website and to find the 90 amps, it was buried, but it doesn't tell you what the um, things are other than super fine micro chokes and black uh, capacitors. Um, so I, it feels like despite the price, you're not kind of getting the information that an enthusiast might want to be able to make his purchase, his, her, whatever derivative you would like to uh, use. Um, and I think that's somewhere where they're failing themselves a little bit because it has changed over the years. So, the Hero. The performance, as you've seen in the graphs, was pretty good. The overclocks did pretty good as well. Uh, we did consistently have CPU problems, which was different to the other boards as well. And that's something that I do have to stress. I struggled the most to keep this one cool. To do the overclock, I literally had air conditioning on and the, the system with the, all of the fans on just to keep it in check to try and find that stability. Now that's my job is to find the upper end of that stability, but what, how that correlates into a usable system at home is really gonna depend on whether you've got custom cooling, if you've got the i9, you're going to need it. If you've got an AI, you may have to taper it back down. But one of the things I will say uh, for a personal thing, if you're going to leave your CPU at stock, do yourself a favor and undervolt it. But for now, at least, this has been the tiniest one with another video for you. And you can go and see many, many more on the channel, on the website. Please like, subscribe and comment. But for now, at least, this has been Tiny Tom Logan with the uh, Maximus Hero out. Ding. Love you, sis.